Farmers are on alert after a contagious and deadly form of bird flu was found in dozens of wild birds in our state. Not only is it a danger, it is evolving and it is getting the attention of the world. It's called bird flu, H5N1, and news of the disease increased searches on Google by people wondering if the illness could infect humans. Ducks and geese are the culprits that carry the disease. You can also transmit it if you step in their droppings. With a sudden lack of energy, appetite, and coordination, coughing, sneezing, swelling, and eventual death. Who do you want to feed first, the dog or the cat? Dog. Okay, take dog food. You feed. You want me to feed the cat? Yeah. All right, well, it's time we talk about what everybody keeps asking me about, and that's the, the avian flu, the bird flu, the HPAI. Getting a lot of questions about it. People are asking if I'm concerned about it. So we need to talk about what is it? How does it affect us? What's going on around the country and in the world with this thing? And what can we do to prevent it? You ready to go, bud? Yeah. All right. Oh, it's muddy today. Oh, I'm sliding. Very muddy, be careful, don't fall. It's been raining for about two days straight out here, so while we definitely need the water, it is really muddy everywhere, but our pond is pretty low and we need it to fill up. Good job. Yeah. Yeah, stays open. Stays open, let it go. Stays open. There you go. All right, come on. <laughs> So what is it? <laughs> Quiet, I'm talking. So the HPAI or the highly pathogenic <laughs> avian influenza is a disease that spreads from wild birds, wild animals, and then transfers to domesticated animals like our turkeys, our ducks, our chickens, and it kills them very quickly, almost immediately. You guys remember the H1N1 flu that went around across humans? This is the H5N1 disease. Mostly transfers between birds and other animals, and it does affect humans occasionally, but it's very minuscule. Like, from what I've read, under 100 people that it's killed. And while this disease has popped up this year and it's affecting people and their birds and it's shutting down bird operations, egg operations all over the world, causing people to have their, their entire flocks wiped out. This is literally something that's been around every year. We just only hear about it every so often, but if you look up videos on YouTube, you'll see the HPAI virus you'll see it has affected people or different regions of the world every year. And so while it is something that's affecting us this year, it's always gonna be around. We don't have many birds on our property that free range, and that's potentially an issue with these wild birds coming through. We have these roosters right here that freely roam, and we have the five ducks down at the pond. But other than that, they're in pretty small areas that we have all of our animals and our birds. Mean roosters, yeah. So what is happening? What are these wild birds passing along? How is it being passed along? How is it killing them? So from what I understand, it's wild birds that are coming into your area, sometimes regular birds, but they have lists. I think it's on the USDA website that I'll link, and it basically shows where they believe the virus actually originated from. A lot of times it's a, a, a goose that's flying through the area. Uh, sometimes it's mallards. It's going into local ponds. It's going into local bird feeders. It's leaving things behind or it's transferring the virus from these wild birds to our domesticated fowl, to, to our chickens, ducks, turkeys, whatever birds. I think you're basically gonna recognize if you have a lot of birds die really quickly that they've got avian, that they have the avian flu. And so what do they want you to do if this happens? Of course they don't want the disease to keep on continuing. And so they want you to call them. They want you to call the, your state, your, your local vet. They want you to call your, your state agriculture department. They want you to call the USDA somebody, and then what they're gonna do is they're gonna come out and they're gonna eradicate your flock. They're gonna kill all of your birds. Now, while I totally get it, I totally get it that that's, uh, it's a way of stopping it, this avian flu is gonna, is gonna continue to be around. It's gonna be around every year. And these birds are gonna keep passing through, they're gonna keep passing around the virus, and so I, I have a hard time 
understanding this, grasping this, because I totally get that they, they want the avian flu to stop. And so I think we're gonna have some mixed messages or misinterpretations of how we should handle this, of who, who we should put in charge of our birds and their health. And certainly if I see avian flu passing amongst our birds and we start having them die, it's gonna be something where we're gonna to try to separate out as many birds as we can. The last thing I wanna do is to tell you what to do with your birds and what the right thing to do is, that's, that's up to you. Of course, the, your state agriculture departments, they want you to call and then they're gonna come out and eradicate your flocks. There's a couple videos of, of people in the country that had an infection in their flocks and then they had to, you know, they took their kids away so that the, the USDA could come in. They're wiping out flocks all over the country. They're killing millions of birds, even if just one bird has it on your farm. And it's gonna keep coming back year after year as these wild birds pass through. So do what you have to do, but I would have a really hard time letting somebody else come in and kill all of my birds. Some people are gonna probably say that I'm being irresponsible. State agriculture departments are obviously gonna say it's the wrong thing to do and that you should trust them. But there are a lot of measures that I could take to separate out birds, keep flocks separated, keeping our biosecurity on lockdown, keeping people from coming here and making sure that I'm not transferring the disease from, from one flock to another. Go over by him. Say no. <coughs> Say no. Good job, bud. We don't back down from roosters, okay? You don't let them hurt you, okay? Amber. Amber. Ooh. After rain, it is real muddy here in the duck coop. Yep. Probably not a really good chance of it hatching after it's sitting in water and mud, but we'll take it in and dry it off and might try hatching it, we'll see. So what about that mandarin egg project? At the end of January all through February, we were collecting eggs, even up until about a week ago, we were collecting eggs. Hopefully we'll have an update on that sometime in the next month, but now we're letting them leave their eggs here in the nesting box. So at least four or five eggs in there now. So we'll let them sit on them, hatch them out. Cause they do a way better job than I do. It's, it's not super easy hatching out mandarin eggs. So I'll just let them do that task. And there's Poppy and there's Bubbles. So what are we doing to prevent the bird flu from hitting our flocks? Now ultimately, if you really want to be cautious and keep your birds away from it, you're gonna close them off to the outside world. And for a lot of people, that's not very realistic. For here, we have all these chicken tractors that are closed off to the outside world. We do have the, the Bantam flock, they are outside. And so potentially they could get it and then they could spread it into these coops. And so we could just close them up if we really needed to or really were really worried about it. But these coops are at least all closed off to the outside world, so they're not gonna intermingle with the, the wild birds. So I feel really safe about this. If, if a bird does get it somewhere on our farm, we start seeing some deaths somewhere. We could start to spread these guys out. We could make sure that it doesn't get to each individual place. And of course, I wanna make sure that I'm not spreading it through my shoes or hands or anything like that. So if we were really worried about it and we wanted to close them in, we'd, we'd, we'd just have them stay in the coop or close them in. Here's the thing, we're not gonna live in fear about this. We're not gonna live in fear about this. We have our, our ducks down in the pond we're gonna go to in just a moment, All right. and we let them out on the pond. Wild birds do go in that pond, and so there's a chance there could be some intermingling there. The wild birds do not come up to their coop. The wild birds are out in the water. And so even there, the chance of them on, crossing paths the is still incredibly slim. Now, if we wanted to close them in, if this was an isolated incident where we knew that it was only gonna last for a couple months and then be done, we'd close them in, absolutely. But if you look on YouTube, if you look on the internet and do searches for the avian flu, HPAI, H5N1, you'll see that this is around every year. Every year when the birds are migrating, this is, this is hitting flocks all around the world. And we're just not gonna close down. We're not gonna close down our farm for indefinite, for years by years and years. It's, it makes no sense to do that. So how scared am I, or how nervous am I, how worried am I on a scale of one to 10? Like a one. If you listen to the news, you see all the reports, 
You hear about birds being killed. It makes you feel like it's it's here. It's here. It's getting everybody. It's going to kill all the birds. It's going to lock down all the the hatcheries. It's going to it's going to shut down things for years to come. That's how it sounds if you listen to the news. And so you're probably at a nine or ten if that's where your where your info is coming from. Right here, are the cows, Maslow and Wild, non milking day. So yeah, it's wild. Water them, feed them. Keep going. But later in this week, we've got some exciting news concerning the cows. Can't wait to tell you about it. <laughs> ah! Ah! Yuck! You can put some hay out for them? Yeah. Alright, go ahead. Good job. Alright, come on. Come on. You got covered in hay, you got like mud or poop on your face. Let's go get cleaned up, okay? Okay. Here's our Indio Gigante chicks, the tallest chickens in the world. And at seven weeks old, they're getting really big. Did you fall? Oh, bud. All right. We'll go in and get cleaned up, all right? So I've got a couple updates, a couple things that I forgot to mention earlier on uh, when I was doing my research on the avian flu. I've seen some posts from the Departments of Conservation of Missouri and Iowa, at least to name a few, you can check in your local states, but they've banned all bird swaps and, and different auctions, local sales like that. You can still sell from farm to farm, from person to person, as of now. That might change again at some point. And when I was mentioning about the USDA and that they would come in and they would euthanize your birds, what's your incentive to, to contact them and notify them that you have the avian flu on your property? And I wanted to mention that they are willing to pay a fair price for your birds. Now, you may have to prove that to them, what that fair price is. I estimated that for our farm, and the, the emus are a large chunk of that, but our, our birds are valued somewhere between nine to $10,000. And so do I think we're gonna get that from the USDA if we have avian flu here on our farm and they come out and wipe out our birds? No, I don't think they will. <laughs>